All right, this is the chapter 15, uh, Integral Studies, uh, Integral Study Guide. So what I wanna do here is just a brief review of all the new integrals that showed up in this chapter and how you would do them in different situations. So uh, just a couple of notes to begin with is that uh, just notes about parameterizations really. So curves, this is so I don't have to repeat it over and over again throughout this uh, video. So curves C or A curve C are always parameterized by an R of T that has an X component, X of T, or an I component really, a J component, Y of T, and a K component, Z of T. And that's what this will always be with T between A and B. And surfaces or A surface sigma uh, are always parameterized by R of U and V. So like X and Y or R and theta or whatever is appropriate. Similarly an I component a G component and a K component. And this is with a U and V restricted by R, which we can think of as a region in the UV plane. But those are often by inequalities. Typically, I just write R so that when we write the notation, we know what we mean. So then, here were the types of integrals we had. So the first one was the first one was a line integral. This is this this is the order that we that we introduced them in, as well. Line integral of a function. So this looked like this: integral over c of f of x y z. Yes, maybe just x comma y in two dimensions, but I'm going to write three dimensions wherever it's appropriate, just so we can see a more general form. So there is one way to do this. So what we do is we parameterize c in the integral over c of f of x y z ds. This turns into the integral from A to B. So we're using the parameterization up at the top in the notes of f of x of t, y of t, z of t. That gets multiplied by the magnitude of r prime of t, dt, right? <clears throat> so that is it. That is the only way to do this type of integral. So if such a thing emerges, That is what you have to do. So second one, line integral of a vector field. So this showed up in two different forms. We could either see this as the integral over C. Uh, so the first way that we ever saw this, it's like mi nj tk dot dr but it also showed up as integral over c of m dx plus n dy so same thing plus p dz in other words these mean exactly the same thing um, they're just two different notations right here so we had four different ways that we could tackle these. And so let me sort of um, uh, list them all and then make some comments about uh, about when you would want to use these. So A is the most basic way. Now basic doesn't mean easiest. This is actually sort of generally the last thing you want to do. 
Um, in theory, it would always work, but in practice, it's not the way that you typically want to do it, which is you parameterize C, then the integral over C. So we could write this a couple of different ways. Let me write this as the first, so just, just as a quick comment, this one, you could also think about it down here, like more generally. Like this. I just sort of subdivided up the, uh, the M, N, and P are just the components of the vectors. But it might be easier to think of it the, the way I just wrote it. So then what happens is, this becomes the integral from A to B of F bar of X of T, Y of T, C of T, and then we dot this with r prime of t dt. So the little note here, this is um, in theory it will always work, but it's almost always really awful. Like it might be hard to parameterize c. Um, it could be a really bad integral. So this is really a, this is sort of the last ditch approach. So basically, look at the other methods first and try them. So what's sort of maybe the nicest when it works is a fundamental theorem of line integrals. So this is what we can use if the vector field is conservative. Then we can use it, right? So then if the vector field is conservative and if little f of x, y, z is the potential function, or let's say a potential function. Then the integral over c of f of x, y, z dot dr. So we take this little f, we plug in, so the curve c, this has a starting point and an ending point. So we plug in the end point, we plug in the starting point, and we subtract. This is really nice, right? This is great, especially if we don't really know a lot about the curve, if we only know the start point and the end point. Um, it takes a little bit of work because we need to know the, the potential function, but sometimes finding the potential function is pretty easy. And then this becomes great. So this is like a really, really, really good thing. Um, and then a little note that goes with this right, is if C is closed as well, right? So if F is conservative and C is closed, the answer is zero because the start point and the end point will be the same and that's it. So C, we have Green's theorem. So as we go through this, you can sort of look at the specifics. Like if F is conservative, then use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, like period, like use it. It's the, it's sort of the way to go. So Green's theorem, same deal, right? So if, if we're in 2D, if C is the counterclockwise edge of R, in other words, it's completely enclosed around R. Right, so since we're in 2D, we can think about it this way. In other words, there's no, um, there's no DZ in this case. becomes the double integral over r of n sub x minus m sub y dA. And just a little note here is that this can also show up in its other form. Like this. Right, but in either case, don't overcomplicate it in your head. In both cases, in both of these notations rather, You've got a line integral, which you can tell because of the integral over C, and you've got a vector field, which you could tell because of either format. If C is the counterclockwise edge of R, then like this is the thing you want to use, right? This is the thing, like, like it's definitely your go-to. 
And then lastly, we have Stokes' theorem. That if we're in 3D, right, in 3D, if C is the edge of sigma, so this is why it's sort of like 3D diversion of uh, Green's theorem, if you like. So the integral over C of f of x, y, z dot dr. And this becomes the double integral over sigma. So then we take the curl of f dot n ds. And in this case, c is the edge of sigma. Sigma has the induced orientation. So those are the, the those are the really on this page is everything for line integrals, All right? So we've got line integrals of functions back at the beginning, right? Let's pick a different color uh, just to sort of go through and mark this up a bit, just so we can see. Just as a reminder, we've got line integrals of functions. They look like this. Just one way to do that. That's it. Line integrals of vector fields, which you know all these different notations might look confusing, but they're not. Right, really? So you can sort of trace through it and be like, well, you know it's a line integral. So I'm going to mark the heck out of this. So you know it's a line integral because of the C. That's the indication. And you know it's a vector field because like here you've got a vector field. Here you've got I's and J's and K's. This is the only weird one because you've got this weird notation. So you just sort of have to remember that this is, so there's a vector field hiding in plain sight. But all of them and the one number one is the line integral. And you can see that it's a function. There's no ijk's in there. So for a vector field, you've got four ways. So think through those four ways, right? You say to yourself, like, well, if I'm in 2D and C is a counterclockwise edge of R, then Green's theorem, for sure. If your vector field is conservative, fundamental theorem of line integrals, for sure. If you're in 3D and C is the edge of sigma, then Stokes theorem, for sure. If none of those will work, then go back to the basic way, parameterize C and go with that. Right? Generally not the best way, but it'll always work. So let's go on to the um, surface integrals. So let me clear all this off and then keep going. So three, so surface integral of a function. So this will look like integral over sigma of f of, let's say, x, y, z, d capital S. There is one way to do this. So there's a theme here, right, that when you're doing the, the integral of a function, so either the line integral of a function or the surface integral of a function, there is only one way. That is it. So we parameterize sigma. So back at the beginning of the notes in this video, we mentioned that, like how we do that. And then the integral over sigma of f of x, y, z, ds. This becomes the integral over r of f of x of u and v, y of u and v, z of u and v. This is multiplied by the magnitude of the cross products. No bar on the cross product. This is actually this number three is the one that people forget the most often because we do all these things with line integrals of, of uh, vector field and Stokes theorem and Green's theorem and so on and divergence theorem for surface integrals and, and so on. And, and like this one sort of gets hidden in plain sight. The surface integral of a function is, is it's easily forgotten about. So, um, so please don't forget it because it can make for a really easy problem if the sur surface is easy to parameterize. But really, there's just the one way. And then four surface integral of a vector field. This will be an integral over sigma of big F of x, y, z, big F bar dot n ds. So now there are two ways, um, and that may be sort of slow to recognize because the, the last way, the second way we only did is the last section of the text. So a, um, it's sort of the basic way. 
I'll listen to both and then we can reflect upon which one would be used in which situation is parameterized sigma and then the integral over sigma of f bar of x, y, z dot n ds. This becomes plus or minus the integral over r. So we take x of u and v, etc., etc., plug those in. And then it gets dotted with that cross product. And then this uh, plus or minus is chosen. This is plus if r u cross r v of those guys match sigma's orientation and minus if they're against it. It'll be one or the other. So in theory, this will always work. Might not be pretty, might be an ugly integral, might be hard to evaluate. Then we have the divergence theorem. So this will only work if sigma is the surface of D oriented out. If it's oriented in, you can use this and you negate. But the big criteria is that sigma has to be the surface of D. So like D is a solid object, sigma is its surface. Then you would use this. So the divergence theorem says, I'll just write f dot n ds. So we can flip this to a triple integral over d, take the divergence of f dv. So this guy you absolutely want to use um, when sigma is the surface of d. Like it, it, I can't think of a single situation where you would use the basic way if you can use the divergence theorem. So always when you're doing a surface integral of a vector field, ask yourself if uh, if your sigma is the surface of a D, of a solid, and if it is, do the divergence theorem. So that sort of summarizes all of the uh, all of the types of integrals. And so I just wanna end on uh, making one quick comment about, let's see, I wanted to make a comment about, this is really more a chapter 14 comment, so let me put that in a different section and I'll just end this here.